Good evening, everyone. It's SK and Ren. How's it going? We are here for... <clears throat> Ten yeah. upgrades no. that... No! Whoa, we're oh, supposed oh, to do the oh. talk about it. Talk God, about really, it Tuesday. We really gotta get this done. Yeah, so we're here for Talk About It Tuesday. Today we are talking ten upgrades that you will um, not see... Um, A return. Okay. Hey, Caitlin. Um, so, with everything going on, um, a lot of people are putting money into their house, right? We're seeing, we're seeing HGTV shows, Flip or Flop, we're seeing all of these different kinds of, um... My favorite, DIY. Programs, or kind of, like, help, help via online, and, um other resources where people are fixing up their homes yeah in addition to that the market is pretty good so people probably think they can get you know top dollar for their you know fix or flip or whatever they're doing so why we want to talk about this today is because improving too much is actually such a thing so the very first thing to do when you are looking at a house and thinking that you want to put some upgrades in is to reach out to Sean or I and make sure that the numbers that you want to put into this property support the numbers that you will get out of this property. So, without further ado, let's we got get into 10 it. upgrades that you will not get your money back at resale, and you're going to want to avoid all 10 of these things like the plague. And some of these things, I mean, granted, with that being said, some of these things it's personal opinion right so yeah so these are all you know if you're gonna stay in the house for a while and you're gonna receive pleasure from these things uh go, go for ahead it. go, go ahead. for it honey but if you are doing it as an investment purpose probably not so okay number one and this is my favorite thing and this is why i made so sean made his list of five and i made my list of five um Number one is light fixtures. Love putting in cool light fixtures, um, but there should be a limit as to what that number is. Um, you know, you can see $1,000 light fixtures at Menards, probably go for the less expensive ones than that. What do you think an average buyer would pay for any given price fixture in a home? Yeah, like if, Say, if you were to put like a $2,000 light fixture in, do you really think that someone's gonna pay two thousand dollars more for your house because of that light fixture? The answer is no. Probably not. No. But the good thing is you could take the light fixture with you if you want. That's true. Make sure you disclose it though. All right, light fixtures. Now my number one was DIY project fails. So it's important to if you're gonna do a project at home, it's important that you at least know how to do it or do some research on it. Maybe watch a YouTube video because buyers really scrutinize every little thing in a house. Take for example, a piece of trim on the floor. Even if it's missing that little circular quarter round, I mean, buyers are gonna notice that, so. <clears throat> and it just kind of like shows like how the whole qual, like how potentially how the whole quality of the house could be. You know, if you cut on that corner, how many other corners did you cut? Buyers value craftsmanship. So just remember the few bucks you saved on your DIY could cost you thousands in and resale. We know that firsthand, right? Um, okay, number two, putting on a bigger deck. Um, or sorry, this is number three. Putting on a bigger deck, definitely, decks are awesome, but in the eyes of a buyer decks are also a very a big liability right you're gonna have to replace that deck if it's not made out of a composite wood um just know that decks although they can be great they can also cost a lot of money to replace to fix to upkeep so adding a deck hi mike good question um i have gotten this question from from past uh past sales i'm thinking about backlands mm -hmm. um in the past and um, I guess, I guess replacing a deck and adding a deck, I don't think is necessary. I think it's nice. 
I do think that you can sell your house for the amount of money that you put into building the deck. I do believe that. Um, but, um, so yeah, I guess, I guess that can kind of go either way, but I think putting on like a bigger deck, like if you spent 12 grand on a deck, I don't think that's necessary. If you put on a new four, four to $5,000 deck, are you going to get your money out of it? I'd probably say probably so. But, um, uh, but we're talking totally mostly agree. about like extensive decks, big decks. Like, extra large decks like putting on it putting in a deck with like a built-in hot tub like people are not gonna pay more money for that if you're gonna redo your deck people will probably pay pay what you pay for number four and, and oh. TN, we definitely have some good contractors we'd love to shoot you their phone numbers uh, but my next uh, item I was gonna talk about is extensive landscaping so it's very expensive to put in um, you may enjoy it uh, while you live there, but potential buyers may see it more as uh, more weeding, more maintaining, more watering, um, and stuff like that. So they don't, they probably don't value it as much as maybe you do. And let's just be clear here. Landscaping is great. If you can improve the way the outside of the house looks, so a buyer's first impression is oh my gosh, this house is beautiful, Beautiful. it's been well maintained, that's great. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about installing waterfalls and ponds because, let's be honest, ain't nobody wanna take care of some stupid koi fish. I'm sorry, but it's just true. It's true. That's true. So, so um, you talk about major waterfalls, rocks, all of that like kind that. of stuff. Again, if you're doing it for personal pleasure, have fun. But we're not seeing it as something that people are getting thousands, tens of thousand dollars out of their house. Um, the next one, this is kind of a sad one for me because... What did we just do? Because we just, I just made you buy a house with one of these. And, but, but, here's the thing. All right, I'm just going to get into it. Swimming pools. Swimming pools are probably the worst thing that you could put into a house um, and expect to get your money out of. Swimming pools. And Sean said that because recently we have just purchased a house with a swimming pool. But now, with that being said, if you are wanting to per if you are wanting a pool in your backyard, my um, suggestion suggestion, thank you would be to go out and buy a house with a swimming pool. Do not build a swimming pool in your backyard. New swimming pools can cost anywhere from sixty to $200,000 um, and upward and onward um, with that number. So um, when you go to sell that house, there's no way that someone's gonna pay $50,000 more for the house um, just because you put in that swimming pool and honestly a lot of the times people will actually pay less pay less or or even worse heartbreaking they'll fill it with concrete horrible I mean just horrible it's horrible and like I have known people to purchase houses and fill them with concrete so um, swimming pools so yeah don't put in a swimming pool buy a house with a swimming pool expensive and they take a lot of time and money to maintain, which is why they are not as valuable to buyers. So my next item is specialty built-ins and custom renovations, such as a hot tub or a fish tank or a wine cellar. Um, the things you, that look super, super cool. So you might find a lot of pleasure in those while you live in the house. But if you're planning on making money on those items, I probably wouldn't do them uh, because buyers are looking at homes to make their own. They don't want to have to go back and change all of your custom renovations because, you know, that means spending money for them that to take all of your custom renovations down. Yeah, kind of the more bland, the better. Again, with that being said, there's obviously going to be some... Um, you know, custom finishes that people are looking for, but having built in fish tanks is definitely not because one they of see them. that as requiring maintenance and time. 
So for them, maintenance and time, money is re reduction in value. Right. So all of these pretty much have to do with maintenance, time and effort for the buyer. And realistically, I mean, the top three reasons why someone is going to buy your house is number one, the location. Number two, um, the price per square foot. If they are seeing that there is a strong um, market for, for what they're potentially buying. And honestly, they're not going to purchase your house because you have a built-in fish tank. Okay, so hi, Jamie. Um, the next thing is that um, an upgrade that you will not get back at resale is removing bedrooms to make other bedrooms bigger. Or so, turning or, a bedroom into an office. Yeah, so, um, Sean, you can answer this. What constitutes as a bedroom? It has to have an egress window. That's really all that it needs. Right, so... It's a three-by-three three window that a firefighter can fit through. So, recently I had a client. He took his master bedroom, and there was a bedroom, four-bedroom house. There was a bedroom right next to his master bedroom. He wanted to knock open that... Um, wall to make the master bedroom bigger bad idea why because people are gonna pay more money for more bedrooms so if you have the opportunity to make one bedroom bigger just know that um, you're gonna get more money for more bedrooms especially if you're in an older neighborhood where the master bedrooms don't typically have walk-in closets or showers or bathrooms in their master bedroom it's gonna cost a lot more money to put those in to an older home than it would be to just go somewhere and find a house that has a walk-in closet and a bathroom and it is nice like like it is nice when people do like the older homes like in field club and they do have master bathrooms I mean what it I mean I feel like that sometimes does help those houses stand apart from the other houses sometimes Sometimes, but, but they can cost a lot more but, money. Yeah, they're gonna cost a ton of money to you. And again, depending on what you've purchased the house, knowing your numbers is so, so important and making sure that you can still get that amount out. Because like recently we tried to put a bathroom in um, the Arbor Day B&B and it was gonna be how much to put a bathroom in that closet? Five. Five grand to put a bathroom in that. And that doesn't, that didn't even include like a shower um a shower that was just a, a toilet and a sink five grand so um make sure you know your numbers okay so i said removing bedrooms <clears throat> don't remove any bedrooms keep your bedrooms number not or number nine for me would be uh replacing your carpet when it's time to sell so instead of replacing carpet i'd probably recommend just getting them clean because there's a good chance that the buyers looking at your house don't even want carpet anyway. They might have some allergies. Um, they probably see the carpet as requiring a lot of maintenance to keep clean. And they might not even like the color of the carpet that you picked out. So. And everyone's going to have different opinions on this. But honestly, you guys, the only thing that we're seeing in new construction homes in um, some of the best flips out there is that... Um, luxury vinyl or VCC vinyl core, vinyl uh, composite, composite core, core um, LVT luxury vinyl tile that is all that we're seeing in these beautiful flips in these new homes why because it's durable it's um, it is resistant against water and scratches so really if you guys are purchasing a home and there is carpet and not hardwood floors underneath definitely think about how much money it would cost to replace that to the luxury vinyl tile um, instead of replacing that carpet. Antian, you asked if, re if finishing a basement, will you get your money back? Good I question. would say yes. I would say yes, you will get your money back. Now? It just kind of depends on what you're putting down there and how much it costs. So a typical basement that someone would Per, that would pay more money for is a bedroom, a bathroom, and a rec space, right? Yep. Now things like, and that kind of brings me to number 10. So is, yeah, so a, a bedroom, a bathroom, and, and a, a rec, rec space. So, and that's kind of it. That's kind of, that's a great basement. That is, um, if people are purchasing a, some people that are purchasing a basement that want to finish space is usually because um, someone will be living with them in that space and can operate that space for themselves. 
and that's um, that's kind of what they what what they have in mind these buyers which leads me to number 10 is elaborate bar space um, although and I feel like wet bars were the kind of people that would totally Enjoy go them. all out and put crazy stuff in in our bar area but um, again we're not seeing that money come back to people when they go to sell their house because although you like to get drunk and party not everybody does right that's right so um all of these things again thanks for watching one more. one more lastly lastly i've been seeing a lot of this lately what people turning what their do? their garages into gym space you don't like that i don't recommend that as a good idea especially if you're planning on putting down new flooring if you're planning on putting an electrical in there or maybe hvac like a heater or air conditioner in your garage um that's probably not a good idea people really are looking to put their cars in garages and um not their sweat <laughs> but you know some people do like it cool but, it's neat. but when you go to show your house, people, that's not going to sell them. Like, that is not going to make people them... People actually like to use their garage for cars. Yes. And I would say about that's 95% of the world, right? Yeah. 95% of the So, Auntie buyers. Anne, if you finish your basement, put down that vinyl core composite flooring instead of carpet. Bedroom, a bathroom. A bedroom and a bathroom with a rec room. And do you suggest doing a bathroom with a shower? Yes. Because yes. a three-quarter so, bath. So powder baths, which is just a can you stop doing that? A. Which is just a toilet and a sink, um, versus doing a three-quarter bath, which is a toilet, sink, shower. You're actually going to um, get more money out of having the shower. Obviously, you're going to yep. put more money into it. You're going to get more money out of it. And um, people who are wanting to finish basement, they're looking for that that shower down there for that extra space for guests to stay and kind of have their own space. So, I would think that that type of improvement would cost around twenty five to thirty thousand max, depending on the square footage. Depending on the square footage. So, thank you Probably. guys for watching. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Hmm. Now I have to clean up the mess while you were talking. Sean decided to rip apart a piece of bread. <sighs> I think that's it. That's it. Talk about it Tuesday. Thanks for joining these. If you just joined on now, um, rewind, rewind, slide left to um, watch this from the beginning and see the top 10 upgrades that you will probably not get back um, during once you go to resell your house again. So. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for Realtor Runs. Which one Wednesday? Realtor Runs. Which one Wednesday? Happy snow day, you guys. Good night. See you guys. Sean, should I show them what you did?